name is Garmin, and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl, and all of the other things, I won't say them out loud, I'll just put them right here. Uh, so this is a very special episode of the podcast. Um, the sun is being crazy outside, so I stuck a lot of tissue paper on the windows, another reason for my neighbors to believe I might be crazy. Um, <laughs> so I hope the uh, lighting won't be too weird. Um, yes, yeah, so this is a very special episode of the podcast, as I have just had my first self-employed week last week. Um, I have quit my day job and I am now a full-time knitwear and crochet designer, which has been my dream for a long time. And um, so I'm going to tell you a bit more about that. Uh, I will put some timestamps in the description box below the video uh, if you want to skip all that and just see what I have been up to knitting and crochet wise. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I really, um, where do I start? Um, well, a lot of you might know that this has been my dream for a long time. Um, I had been working part-time at my job for two years, which was already a big step for me. I had every Thursday off, and on my Thursday I would, you know, do everything that needed to be done for my business. I would do some admin stuff, you know, maybe the website wasn't working right or a plugin needed to be reinstalled or whatever, or um, kind of, you know, boring, boring stuff. But uh, I would also record podcasts, record tutorial videos, uh, work on new patterns, um, you know, all the fun things. Uh, everything would, would be done on that day. And uh, so every week I had a big to-do list for Thursday and um, you know I already I always um, got a lot done on Thursday so I felt really good but then if I didn't complete everything that I had to wait until next Thursday or you know usually I would work in the evenings and in the weekends as well but yeah it, um, it kind of uh, eat away at my social life <laughs> so um, that wasn't very ideal. Um, so, um, this year, for a couple months, it already felt like I had not enough time uh, to do all the things I wanted to do. I felt a lot of pressure, uh, you know, and especially when you see other designers just popping out designs, like, once every month or every two weeks, and I was just getting... Uh, that was really pressuring me, um, and it still kind of does, to be honest. Um, but also, I just I just wanted to spend more time on my business. So at my day job, I asked for another day off, so that I would work only three days a week. And uh, we had a lot of uh, talks about that, and um, um, yeah, just. It didn't work out so I um, thought for a bit and decided that it was time for me to quit my job and um, and search for a part-time job elsewhere where I could just work two or three days a week uh, and then while I was thinking about that I thought well why do I need to have that instant overlap why why do I need to um, find another job immediately and that's when it kind of clicked I thought mm, I could also just take a couple months for myself uh, you know I have a, enough savings to pay the mortgage um, I can just take this time to kind of kickstart my business to, to just put a whole chunk of time into it and see if it's sustainable or not um, and then in a couple months, I can always search search for a new job. Um, at the moment, um, it's uh, yeah, there's a lot of jobs available here in the Netherlands, and um, yeah, even if I would just work at customer service, you know, for twenty hours a week, 
you know, that would be fine. And I asked around and there were a lot of jobs available. So, so I thought, okay, well, it's not really necessary for me to get another job right now. So I decided to take the plunge and to just quit my job and be a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Um, so that was all really exciting um, and scary. <laughs> I made a decision uh, by the end of August and then now the end of September I have actually quit. Um, and last week was my first week of self-employment, um, full-time self-employment. And I have to admit, it kind of felt like a vacation, <laughs> um, mostly because my boyfriend was not at home. Uh, he was um, on his vacation. Uh, so I was home alone with my cat. I had no routine at all. Um, yeah, I just stood up late. I uh, went to bed late, um, yeah, uh, I didn't have a routine at all, and then, um, but I did get a lot done, although I was, I don't know, it was kind of weird, um, because I did start, you know, working on my to-do list, but um, I realized that for since I had all week, you know, I, I have a couple months now, um, I would need to rethink my, my to-do list. And by the third day, I got uh, so uninspired. The weather was not helping at, uh, at all at that time because it was dreary outside, dreary and gray. Uh, so I went for a walk and that was really good. And um, right now I'm thinking that maybe I just work six hours a day and then most of them in the morning and then in the afternoon I go for a short walk and then in the evening I can work on samples and stuff um, you know stuff that doesn't really feel like work but still is work kind of um, so I'm just trying to find my way I'm trying to find a new routine I've ordered one of those desk uh, tabletop cal calendars uh, so I can just plan out things because uh, now I just have a million notebooks that have scribbles in them uh, to-do list here to-do list there and then it's not really um, uh, clear <laughs> um, yeah but that has been a really big struggle for, for me last week the routine and discipline um, but other than that it has been great Oh, it's just, yeah, uh, the weekends, uh, I really try to take off, and I realize that I haven't taken a weekend off in years. I would always be working on something. I would always, you know, even when we went to a family a birthday, I would take a sample with me, knit on it in the car, maybe even knit on it at, during the birthday, which, which I know, I know, I know, I shouldn't do that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> if it was easy enough, I would just knit on it constantly. And um, the last, so I have two weekends off until now. And it has just been great. I felt so more, so much more energized. Um, I really want to go out and do stuff with friends. Uh, whereas before, I would just, you know, oh, no, I'd rather just finish this piece of work at home. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's made a huge difference already um, for my mental well-being, for my social life, and um, for my business as well. So up until now, all is well. <laughs> yeah, and um, I'm just having a lot of fun. So today, uh, my second self-employed Monday, I decided to record a podcast and tell you all what I have been up to. Uh, I have two finished objects and two whips to show you. Um, and I think well, I'll just start there. I have a lot more things going on, but a lot of them are secret um, or a patron only. So just gonna start with these four projects now. So I am wearing one of my recent FOs, which is the SFT 
by Shay Johnson, who is Knit and Crochet on Instagram. I have worn this to also Shilka Festival, but I didn't really get a good picture. Um, and I've worn it last weekend as well at a uh, friend's baby shower, and we all needed to wear pink, so I thought, yes, I got this. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have finished my As If Tea in uh, pink. And I have used uh, three colors of Erin weight yarn for the body. I'll stand up. <laughs> Can you see this? <laughs> okay, so it's kind of cropped, so I can't really lift my arms. Um, so I used a different color for the bottom of the body, and then I faded into another color. They're both purple, so it doesn't really show, but um, yeah. And then I used a third color for the collar and the um, sleeve cuffs. Ta da! <laughs> and the mohair I used is one that I dyed myself, which is this one. It's uh, dyed with cochineal and it's called Love Potion. And I really like it. It's just the perfect shade of pinky purple. And I like it. Um, I have another skein in the shop if you want to take a look. Uh, I still have a lot of yarn in the shop. Um, you can find it at newleafdesigns.nl and then click on the shop tab and then you can see all of the products. And uh, I have free worldwide shipping from 60 Euro, so take a look. And a lot of Stranger Things inspired colorways as well. Uh, so yeah, it was really nice to knit with this mohair. Um, and so I fused it for the front. And for the back, you can see my top that I'm wearing underneath. It's just, it's so cold, so <laughs> I want to wear as many layers as possible. Um, the I think I talked about the modifications that I made last time. Uh, so I... I did intarsia. No, I didn't do intarsia. What did I do? I did stranded color work for the um, um, yoke. Uh, for these triangles, um, the pattern actually says that you knit it together with the mohair, but I didn't do that. So I, um, I have just. Um, I've carried the strand of mohair along the back of the work um, because you need to work on it here and then, you know, carry it along at the back and then work on it here and then here. So you basically, you know, you knit a square. Um, yeah, so I did that at the back uh, simply because uh, adding the mohair strand in here would um, lighten the color. And I, um, with the fade that's happening right now, I didn't want to add that extra element. So uh, I'm pl pretty pleased with how that turned out. I think I recall it last time um, I cast on for the second size first and then decided to do the first size. Um, I think. I might I might do the second size next time just because I don't know I haven't blocked it yet so I might wait uh, until after blocking to to say that but um, yeah I, I just feel that it could be a little bit wider so um, so actually the second size I think was better for me I did make it a lot um, longer I think at least 10 centimeters uh, and still it's cropped so um, yeah I don't know last time next time I might uh, make it a little bit wider and longer but again blocking uh, might make a difference this time yeah but all in all I'm really happy with this top it's just um, really colorful and uh, yeah, it's very whimsical. It's it's not very standard, and um, yeah, I like clothing that is not standard. <laughs> so yeah, I like it. Um, 
I, I'm not sure if it's really wearable, but you know, now I'm not longer working at a day job, I don't need to worry about that, so I can just wear it at home. <laughs> um, right, so my next finished object is a pair of socks, and I, or did I already show you these last time? I don't think so. No, because I did finish them on the way home from Oslo Stryker Festival, but in the vlog I don't think I shared these. So here they are. A nice pair of colorful socks. <laughs> um, made out of fine fish yarns. Um, dyed by the beautiful Terry. Yeah, and I just... I just love this colorway. Uh, I, I bought the yarn at Yarndale last year uh, and I'm having serious FOMO, fear of missing out, of Yarndale this year. Uh, I'm just seeing the pictures and I'm wishing I was there but I'm not. So, But thankfully I have a souvenir from last time. So um, when I was at Terry's stand I saw a pair of socks that had a kind of like striping effect but not really and um, uh, and I asked for uh, because I didn't particularly like that color uh, so I asked for uh, if she had any other skeins that would that were dyed in the same way so uh, and she pointed me to these to this color and I really really like it uh, the striping is yeah it turned out okay with this sock yeah you can really see the stripes here but then on the back, it just kind of disappears. It, it has a lot to do with gauge, so I knew that was going to happen. Uh, this one, it's less obvious, but I still like it. And notice how... Um, is this the instep? I always forget. So this the front part of the foot, you know, at the same... Mm where the heel of that and then the front part of the foot. So here all the purple kind of gathers and then on the heel all of the pink gathers and the same is on the other sock. So all of the pink is at the heel and all of the purple is at the foot. So I thought that was kind of fun. Um, I knit these socks toe up um, with my favorite uh, method. Um, you can find my toe up socks formula in uh, my YouTube library. So I recorded a couple of videos that are called simple toe up socks um, or how to knit toe up socks. Um, and we basically just knit a whole pair of socks just from toe to heel to cuff. Um, what I have changed since then is that for the first four rounds, I'm increasing every round um, to get a more rounded toe. And I have experimented with a new heel um, because I wanted to do a heel flap and gusset, but I wanted to do, to do them uh, toe up. And um, the pattern that I had for toe up heel flap and gusset, it just, uh, I wasn't able to memorize it, um, it involved a lot of maths, um, you know, it didn't have a set number that you do for each size, so I wasn't able to memorize it, um, so instead I created a kind of formula myself, and I quite like how it turned out. So what I did is that I created a kind of gusset, it's, it's difficult to see with the variegated yarn, but so I increased here and then I still did a kind of uh, German short row heel and then I decreased along this line until I had the uh, original number of stitches again. And I'm going to do a tutorial video on this for my Patreon page. Um, and it's just, yeah, it just fits me really, really well. So, 
uh, I want to do this for more of my socks. So yeah, if you're interested in that, be sure to check out my Patreon page. I will be filming it soon. Um, I will be prioritizing the videos that I have planned. Uh, so for the uh, Colorwork Confidence uh, Masterclass, I have filmed most of the tutorials uh, for that. So that will be going up uh, soon. I hope within the next month, so October. Um, and then I hope to be filming a tutorial one for these, but I first have to knit one sock that is kind of like, um, knit in a yarn that you can actually see what I've done. And I plan to, uh, use a different color for each section. So it's really, uh, easy to see, uh, where one section, uh, begins and ends. Yeah, but I'm just really happy with how these turned out. I still have a lot of the yarn left, so I'll be using that in other projects too. Um, yeah, I love scrappy projects, so I'm saving up all of that. Uh, yeah, but I just, I'm so, so pleased with this, and I've worn these a bunch of times. And yeah, my new favorite sock pattern. Talking about socks, I have another pair to show you. Uh, that I have done a bit of work on. They are my Christmas socks. And I finished the first sock. I'm not sure if I showed you this last time. Um, I knit on these for my Christmas make-along. The Christmas is coming now, which ended about a month ago. Um, and yeah, so this is the first sock. I had knit the foot and then just left it for years uh, because you know it was turning out too small and I, I just didn't want to um, figure out how to how to make it better so um, but then I finally did um, <laughs> yeah. I still have to block it so um, it might, I'm, I might be able to stretch it just a little bit more. Um, but can you just see how much of a difference the leg is to the foot? Like it's much bigger. <sighs> yeah, it was so small. And also when I was starting to knit this, I just um, wasn't... Uh, I was just getting into color work um, and you know it does look good but it's just it's so tight uh, probably because of the pattern in the sole which is um, I think that makes it really tight as well because the floats are very short uh, I think when the floats are long you have a bit more stretch um, I'm not sure about that though um, yeah, so I increased for the uh, leg and yeah, I picked up a lot of stitches so that uh, my ankle is able to pass through this section. Uh, yeah, so this, ugh, it was a labor of love, guys. I have finally finished the sock, but <laughs> I've been to hell and back <laughs> for this sock. <laughs> <laughs> and many of you will know that because this sock has been had been on the needles for such a long time so and I have immediately cast on the second sock and I hope that I will finish this one sooner rather than later because quite frankly these pair of socks this pair of socks deserve to be finished this year yeah um, so, and I, I just, um, I was doubting, like, mm, should I use the same amount of stitches or should I already use a bigger, um, I mean, larger amount of stitches, but, um, I decided that my gauge had changed sufficiently for, for to just, um, use the same amount of stitches. So I did that. 
Or did I? I don't know. Maybe I did add some stitches. I don't know. Ah, I don't know. Uh, I think I used the same amount of stitches. Um, yeah, but... Oh yeah, there is one thing that I have changed and here I've used a lot of the contrast color between the trees. I've already stopped doing that so much in the leg uh, because I thought that was um, kind of cinching it all in. So I stopped doing that. And also, you know, it makes the trees more visible. It's just that at the time when I started these socks, I was afraid of long floats, so I didn't do that. Um, yeah. Anyway, so this sock already looks much bigger. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm excited to work on this again and to have it finished. I still have three months. October, yeah, three months. <laughs> so uh, I hope to be able to finish it in time. They are so cute. So cute. <laughs> yeah. They are going to be my cutest Christmas socks. Yeah. Yeah, so I hope to finish that soon. All right, my last whip. Oh, you guys, I'm on the fence with this one. Um... I have, this is also a really, really long whip, so I have uh, started this, I don't know, like three years ago. And uh, you might have seen my pictures on um, Instagram during uh, Granny Square Day. Um, I was doing a lot of um, uh, sunburst squares. And I was planning to make a coat, or I am planning to make a coat, uh, by Lana Red Studio. Uh, she has a free pattern on her blog. Um, what's, it's not as much of a pattern, it's just um, a collection of tutorial videos that she found on YouTube and then um, that she used to make this coat. Um, but it's not, you know, there's no different sizes, there's, yeah. So it's basically a recipe and I fell in love with it. Um, I'll put a picture on the screen. Um, I just love how it looks and uh, I thought it would be really cute. And then, uh, you know, I finally had enough squares uh, and I started assembling the cardigan and it just, it doesn't look like what I hoped it would look like. It looks like a unicorn clown, you know, is going to prom or something like that. It's, um, it's, uh, very colorful. <laughs> and, um, I'm not sure how I feel about this. It's, um, yeah. I think, because the only really difference between my version and the original code is that I used a lot of different colors for the joining and the original code uses one color and I think I should have done that to make it more you know less screaming <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm just not quite sure how I feel about it. Um, <laughs> a lot of you have messaged me, have messaged me on uh, Instagram saying that they love it. And, uh, another couple of messages said like, wow. <laughs> so I'm not really sure what to do. Um, should I finish it? Should I rip back and do all of the joining with one color? What should I do? I mean, this was already going to be something that I would 
not really wear except for maybe to fiber festivals but now it's just it's just crazy um so yeah <laughs> so this will be like this I'm not sure if I even like that so I'm just not sure should I just make a blanket out of it just please help me I I was so in love with this as a work in progress and then and then now when I see it coming together it's just no I'm not feeling it. Our, I already took off this sleeve to see if it, if it would be less horrible as a kind of vest, but I don't know. And I tried, you know, folding in these edges. I will, you know, um, the pattern says to add another two or three rows to this so that it will kind of be like a color um yeah but <laughs> i i really don't know what should i do <laughs> this is the other sleeve oh did i just let's put that back yeah so this is the other sleeve i'm just i really don't know I look like a clown. It's too many colors. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it could be a really nice statement piece, but I'm just not sure. I am not sure. Please let me know what you think. If you have any ideas, I'm putting this on hold for now. Um, yeah. Just look at this. I don't, and I don't know, is it too much yellow? Is it too much... Too much pink? Too much green? I just felt like... It just feels like you got a whole box of crayons and you use all of the colors. And usually, usually I tend to keep my projects really simple on the color front. I just use, um, the, you know, I just use a couple of the primary colors or kind of like nuances of that and not all of them. So I just, I don't know what to think. I've looked at it for too long now, so yeah. <laughs> so let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have any suggestions because I really don't know anymore. Uh, yeah. So other than that, I've been working a lot on commissions, uh, so I cannot show you. And I've been doing some more natural dyeing and I've worked on my color circle. Um, which I'm really enjoying. So last time, I think I had, let me just, yeah, last time I think I had these. Yeah. And uh, now I have added cochineal iron, which is this one, this exact same one, and then add it into an iron bath. So uh, it's much more gray. And I've added dock, which is surprisingly sunny yellow. I also have some skeins, um, some full skeins in the shop with this color. Um, and dock and iron. So this same color, but then add it into an iron dye bath 
See, it's just magic. I just, I just love natural dyeing. Yeah, so I am working on my color circle. I hope to one day have an indigo dye bath so that I can uh, create a lot more colors. Um, yeah, I still need to add brown, so I'll need to find some um, walnut husks that I can use. Um, what else? I have to do a really saturated matter dye bath so I can get a vibrant red. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it without um, indigo. Yeah, I like these. Yeah, so um, there's still a lot of yarn in the shop, so uh, check it out at uh, newleafdesigns.nl if you would uh, like to take a peek. And um, yeah, I think that is all that I have for this time. So I'll be, um, what will I be doing today? Well, <laughs> see, I just have to get my to-do list in order. I know I have a commission sample that I have a really tight deadline on, so I need to get going on that. But um, I want to spend my kind of productive hours on something else. So I think I'm just going to answer emails and stuff like that. Um, yeah. All right. That was it for me this time. Thank you all so much for watching and a huge thank you to all of my patrons for kind of making this happen. Uh, I would not have been able to do this without you guys. So huge thank you. Um, if you'd like to be part of my Patreon family, please check it out at patreon.com slash newleafdesigns and see how you can support the channel, support me as a designer and get awesome bonuses along the way. Um, Thank you all so, so much, and I hope you all have a very crafty time, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye!